You can see her little head. There she is. There's Caddy. I'm just gonna pet my cat while we do this. Don't mind me. There she is. There's the little face. Hello. Hello. There's the little face. Oh my gosh. Oh, she's so cute. I love her so much. That was going on on top of the holidays. Do you see this? Do you see this? Hi. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. It has been a hot minute. We have not done this in a while and I'm very sorry about that. This last year was something else, I will say. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. I tried pulling my hand away and my cat grabbed my arm and pulled it back down. <laughs> But anyway, we're not here to talk about my cat. We're here to do like a wrap up of 2020 and also talk about the final books that I read in 2020 because we never discussed those. Um, I also ended up with a new obsession that I did not mean to have at all. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter or literally anything other than YouTube, you already know what it is. And that is that I have a very, I have developed a very probably unhealthy obsession with My Hero Academia. I'm literally, like, you can't see, but this is a My Hero Academia hoodie that I got off Etsy. You want to see my wa my water bottle looks like? My water bottle looks like this. Okay? It's just My Hero Academia. That's, that's it. That's, that's all my life is right now, is just My Hero Academia. I've gotten fully obsessed. Right now, actually, I am reading, what is this? Death Day Letter by Sean David Hutchinson. If you've read They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera, it's They Both Die at the End, kind of. The same idea of like, you've got 24 hours before you die, you know, make the most of it type thing. I'm also reading the Toilet Bound Hanako Kun manga. I really like the anime. If you haven't seen the anime, it's really cool, really pretty. Season two is supposed to come out sometime this year, so I'm really looking forward to it, but I wanted to read the, the manga, so that's where we're at. Last year's goal was read 40 books. I only read like 30. So we're gonna try again this year and read 40 books. This is actually one of my favorites, which is Felix Ever After by Kaysen Colander. Kaysen Colander. I really like this book. If you don't know what this book is about, it's literally, it's about a... Why is there a cut on the top of the, it does not matter. It's about a trans guy who gets outed, well not really outed, but someone decides to bully him at his school by putting up pictures of him before he started tra to transition and also like putting up things about like his birth name because like they didn't accept that he was trans. So they were purposely like dead naming him, just harassing him. And I don't know if you guys have read or if you remember Jack of Hearts and Other Parts by Elsie Rosen, but I absolutely loved that book. That was one of my favorite, that is one of my favorite books. This kind of, this gave me mad, like, Jack of Hearts and Other Parts vibes. <laughs> this gave me mad Jack of Hearts and Other Parts vibes, but with the trans guy. And so I absolutely, I really like this. Also, it's really weird seeing, I mean, it's not weird, it's good, but it's weird seeing trans guys in books, because I'm not used to it, okay? As, as a trans man myself, I'm not used to seeing myself in books. I'm not used to seeing trans guys in books. There were two, like, really big books last year that were released with trans men in them, like this one, and then also Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas, which I still need to read, Aiden, hi. hi. Um, but it makes me very happy and very excited. But this was one of my favorite books of last year. It made me so happy. I really love this book. I really recommend reading it. I think I gave it a five out of five stars. I just, it makes me so, so happy. Uh, the next one I read was You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. We love women loving women. We love fighting against racism. And we also love reconnecting with childhood friends. It's about Liz trying to become prom queen. She can win money so she can go to the school that she wants to go to, you know, so she can get a scholarship. And so that's basically what it's about. And it's just a very fun, good book. I really enjoyed reading it. I think I gave this, I did, I gave it a five out of five just because it was very well written. I loved everything about it. And it was just a very beautiful book. And so I just really, I just really recommend reading it. If you want something fun, I really recommend it. I mean, there's also some deep stuff in there because it does talk about racism. It's good. It's 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 a good book. I mean, look at the cover. Look at that face. It's a good book. 
Next we have We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. I don't know why it took me so long to read this, but for some reason it did. It's not even, like, it's a very short book, but for some reason it took me a very long time to get around to reading it. It's been sitting on my shelf for, like, ever. Now this is a very personal book that talks about depression. It also talks about loss, very beautifully written, and reading this last year especially, after everything that had gone down in my own personal life, it was really good to read. And also, it also talks about one thing that I don't see people talk about a lot with depression, which is like when you have like amnesia from depression, you have to like find yourself and like rebuild friendships because of that amnesia, because you don't remember why you were friends in the first place. And not in like a, I don't want to be your friend anymore type way, but like a, I don't know, it's weird because it's like there are these people in your life that's like, we're friends and I know we're friends, but I can't entirely remember our history. So you have to rebuild it with them because your depression gets so bad, you kind of forget. I never see people talk about it in books or people talk about it at all. I see no one ever talk about like having amnesia because of depression. And so reading this book and seeing it mentioned made me so happy because that is something that I've experienced and something that I have dealt with. And it's nice to see it depicted in a book and to see it brought up somewhere other than when it comes to me and myself. There's also like kind of a mystery in here and it's just, it's a really good book. I really recommend reading it. I mean, it's really, it's really short. I gave it like a four out of five. It's, it's good. It's a very intimate and personal book about depression. And it's just, if you have struggled with depression, I think you should read this because it, it made me feel like I wasn't alone in my own struggle. So it was nice to read. Next, I don't have a physical copy of it, but it's, a, it's the book that hurt me the most. It's, it's a web comic. It's, it destroyed me. Okay, so... I have my cousin who I'm very close to and usually like we talk about anime. We've both fallen down the My Hero Academia hole together. There's another hole we fell down last year together which is the Days of Hana hole. And if you don't know what Days of Hana is, it's a webcomic. I don't remember who wrote it and I would look it up if I wasn't filming on my phone right now. But oh my gosh it absolutely destroyed me. It destroyed her too. Listen, my cousin never cries. This, this webcomic made her cry. Listen, in this little book, I write down notes like after I read something. Listen to this. Sis recommended this one to me and I didn't know I could cry so much. It lures you in with a false sense of security, makes you think it's cute, sweet, harmless comic. Then it twists and sucks you into a dark abyss. You think it's going to be okay. Things get a little wild. You get invested in these characters. But hey, it's cute. So everything's going to be fine. Then no, it's not fine. The next thing you know, you're sitting at 2 a.m. An hour into sobbing your eyes out. And it's not a few tears. It's full sobbing. Hiccups, up, loopy sobs for three entire hours. You're shaking. You can't stop the waterworks. Intense sobbing. This emotionally destroyed me and is one of the best things I've ever read. I didn't know I could be broken like that. I wish I could reread this for the first time all over again. When I tell you that this hurt me, I cried about this stupid comic <laughs> for three hours after I read it. And while I was finishing reading it, I could hardly read it because I was crying so hard. And I've never, I've never had anything make me cry like that. The only other thing I remember vividly crying that much during was like the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. And even then, I did not nearly cry as much as I did while reading this. This stupid comic. It's basically about this world where, like, there are werewolves that, you know, like, they have wolf ears and everything. Like, there are werewolves, and sometimes they can go full wolf, but not typically. But they're seen as lesser beings, so they work as slaves in households. You know, just that entire system. And they're not seen as people, they're seen as werewolves. And it's about this girl named Hana who has a werewolf named Haru. So they start going to school, they make friends, like it's cute, it's adorable. Like you don't think, you don't think anything dark or bad's gonna come out of this comic when you first start reading it. I swear, it deceives you. Cause when, she, when my cousin recommended this to me, I was like, this, this looks like a cute, just contemporary comic, you know? And then crap got dark real, real quick. And it gives you whiplash and it hurt. Oh my gosh. Like, the, the ending, the ending for this comic, it hurt so much. I can't, you just need to read it. Okay, this is also the longest book I read last year. It was like 4,800 pages, something like that. Like, it's a long comic, but it goes by real quick. But I was reading it and I was just like, this is cute. 
cute. Like, this is fine. This is just cute. So I rated it a five out of five. I think you should read it. It's on Webtoon. I paid to read the thing, the entire thing. Like, I just, I, I paid for all the episodes because it's like you get one free episode a day, so you don't have to pay to see it, but to read it. Or you could pay, pay it's up to you, but I need to move on from this because I'm going to start crying. So next is The Fascinators by Andrew Elio. Leo Leopoulos. I don't know how to say his last name. I'm so sorry. I was honestly disappointed. I was disappointed in this book. I was really excited to read it. It's Andrew's like debut novel. I was really excited but like the magic system wasn't fully explained. The ending felt very rushed and didn't really make sense. I also kept forgetting the characters and who they were because they weren't that memorable. The book had a cool concept and idea but the execution wasn't very good. This was just not a very well constructed book, I would say. It's not bad. It had a good idea, good concept, but it was just executed poorly and it just, the ending didn't make sense and it felt rushed. So I was kind of disappointed. The, the book was supposed to be about a group of teenagers who are in a magic club who get involved with some cultish stuff that they shouldn't have been involved in. And it just, it was very poorly done. Like, I'm sorry, I, it had a lot of potential, but it was just, it just didn't really make sense. But it was, I mean, it's not bad. I don't regret reading it. I'm glad I read it, but I was kind of disappointed. I gave it a three out of five, which I hate giving out three out of fives a lot because like it had a good concept, good potential, but it just, it didn't work. It was a good, valiant effort, good shot, but it just didn't work. Next is Heartstopper. It's just a very cute, sweet contemporary. I'm excited for the other volumes. It's just cute and wholesome. That's all I got for you. It's cute and wholesome. I give it a four out of five. It's just very cute and I really like it. It's just very sweet. It's a very sweet book. So if you want like a very sweet like graphic novel, I really recommend this one. So next is Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power. Which this book took me the longest to read, which I hate. I literally think I spent three months reading this book and it was good. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's a Rory Power book. It's about a girl who lives with her mom and has questions about their family and about their past and why things are the way they are with her mom, but her mom won't tell her anything. So she ends up running to her mom's hometown, finding her grandmother and trying to uncover and discover the secrets of their family. And it's really good. It's a, it's a nice thriller. Rory's really good about building up these worlds, making it very suspenseful. But I realized after reading Wilder Girls and this, her endings are typically kind of rushed. But this was still really good. I still give it a 4 out of 5. Very much enjoyed it. But that was one thing I've noticed with Rory's books is the endings are kind of rushed. I'm looking forward to see how she continues to grow as an author and also to see if she changes how rushed her endings are. Because it's a good ending but it felt very rushed and very sudden. It felt like we didn't have a lot of information about these family secrets for the majority of the book and then in the last 100 pages it was like bam bam bam. Which, I mean, I understand in a suspenseful book or a thriller, I mean, you do kind of, you know, you do kind of want a little bit of that, but it feels more rushed than it needs to be. I did still really enjoy this book. I also really enjoyed Wilder Girls, which is sitting up on my shelf over there. So, yeah, I really, rec I really recommend it. And I'm excited to read Rory's other books because she is a very talented author and I love her writing very much. I know, I'm sorry I put books in your hammock. The cat is back. So the last book I read is More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera, my boy, my homeboy, my baby, Mr. Adam Silvera. This was the last book that I read of 2020 and it's the deluxe edition. I mean, obviously I wanted to read the more, you know, happy, the happier ending to this book, but then also it was really nice just to reread this because I don't reread read books overly often. I do. But it's very few and far between because usually I'm like, I want to read a new book. You know, I like I want to jump into some new stories and get to know some new characters. So I don't reread books that often, but it was really nice to like sit down and reread this. 
Um, I finished this in like three days. I just, I still love this book. If you've never read More Happy Than Not, it's about this guy here, Aaron Soto, who is trying to be more happy than not. He recently lost his dad. He recently had a suicide attempt himself. And it's about him just trying to find happiness and trying to make relationships work. Basically is the best I could put it. And then there's also this thing called Letio is a company that's around that's like altering people's memories. So that's a thing, this general idea, I guess you could say, but I really like More Happy Than Not. This was Adam's debut novel. Y'all know how I feel about Adam Silvera. I love Adam Silvera. He's one of my favorites. Love him. Oh my gosh, Infinity Reaper goes out this year. <gasps> I'm very excited about that. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So yeah, it was just very nice to reread this and dive back into Aaron Soto. And I really like the new chapter. I also, I like that the original ending is how it is, but I also like the new chapter. I like both. I also like the idea of having like alternate endings because I do, I, well, my favorite book more than this by Patrick Ness. I love a good open-ended book. I love books that are open for interpretation. So I kind of like that there's the official official ending but then there's also this newer official ending and so I just I really like that it makes me very happy so yeah love this book I wanted to catch you guys up on books and then I also did kind of want to talk about like why I wasn't as active the rest of last year as I usually am because I did kind of fall off the face of the earth <sighs> things are starting to calm down so hopefully I should be fully fully back back because I would like to be and have a somewhat consistent upload schedule because I love making videos. I just don't always have time to do it. Well, my cat is very happy and we are done here and this video is long enough. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go play Skyrim actually is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these books back up on my shelf and I'm gonna go play Skyrim. So yeah. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry <laughs> for not posting like I usually do. I'm sorry. Um, but I, Things should go back to somewhat normal now. I need some normalcy in my life, really. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed these books. Read Days of Hana if you want to be emotionally destroyed. Also watch My Hero Academia. It is really good. <laughs> it is really, really good. I love it so much. It is so good. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm leaving you with today. Okay. Yeah, I will see y'all sometime soon. Maybe later this month. I don't know. We'll see how I'm feeling. But thank you for watching and I will see you next time. And my cat is just staring at me. Do you want to say bye to Callie? Hey to get her. Hey to get her. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. Bye.